What's up guys, Los here for Gas and Gears Garage. Thanks for joining me. Today, we're gonna take on the project of removing and actually replacing the original Corvette C4 radiator. The reason, very simple. This radiator shot, it's rusted, it's leaking, no good, it's gotta go out. And now is the time to do some upgrades. The reason is twofold. One is, the original radiator was a single row aluminum, and it also had a plastic housing for the transmission oil cooler lines. I'm not crazy about it, wasn't a big fan. So now's those times that we think about what we're gonna do to make this better. I've, and I've researched a couple of different guys, back and forth, there was some high end, low end, and the best bang for the buck that I found was that these guys over at Engineering Cooling Products, the reason is very simple. They've got a great product at a reasonable price. So I'm looking at an all aluminum radiator, going from single row to two row, warranted, and I'm gonna be getting an entire aluminum sort of casing for the transmission oil cooler lines. I love it, it's fantastic. So now, we're gonna go ahead and replace that. Two things to keep in mind. One is the rubber mountings that go at the bottom of the actual radiator housing are gonna to have to be modified. We're gonna to have to trim those and leave them as kind of a U-shaped. Second thing is the hood that goes on top that covers and it creates the pressure to keep that radiator in place. We're gonna to have to cut it around the radiator cap area. We need to make that clearing because remember, we're going from single row to two rows. So we're gonna to have to make some slight modifications. Also, you're gonna see in there that I did some changes to the transmission oil cooler lines. The reason is the original ones were frozen on to the radiator. Try to remove them, they broke and they tore and they're brittle. They're no good. Now's the time to upgrade those as well. Went to a local hydraulic supply store. They gave me these brand new hoses. I had them made with a neoprene sort of covering. It was uh, steel braided, uh, encased in that hosing. And so now I don't have to worry about it because I've got all the flex I need. I can run them through, up, about, and around. Whereas the other ones before were the biggest pain to remove and I don't wanna deal with that. So now we're gonna go ahead, remove the old one, upgrade to the new one, and gonna do a great project. So let's get started. All right, so here we are. Now, one of the things you're gonna notice is I've already taken this apart, and the reason is I wanna show you a couple of different things. One, I removed the reservoir hose from here, okay, that spills off into the reservoir tank. Two is I removed the cap. Three is uh, you notice that these lines, right, these transmission oil cooler lines are not like the ones that you probably have. You probably have the uh, luminized ones that are stiff and rigid. Well, what ended up happening was when I was doing some work on the transmission and I had to disconnect these lines, they tore and they broke. So basically I had these custom made. Uh, I went to a, a hydraulic hose company to fabricate these for me and they did a fantastic job. So my recommendation is if you can get rid of the old transmission, uh, oil transmission lines, then go ahead and do it. Uh, you're gonna save yourself a huge amount of heartache, especially because they're so stiff and rigid and there's absolutely no way to get these things out. Uh, without really breaking them. Uh, my thought is that these were put on right before the engine was dropped in So that's the only rationale I can think of, of how they got those things in there Now you're going to be using uh, 10 millimeter bolts are what's going to hold this whole um, Cover on here and okay, and you're going to have uh, Some that attach to the actual condenser itself on the AC Another thing is I don't have a condenser. I had that removed uh, prior to some other work I was doing on this so you're not going to see a condenser in here and so these lines are disconnected but you're basically going to have one two three four down there five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen if memory serves me right also I went ahead and disconnected the fan housing from here as well and that's four bolts you'll see those on each corner and you can have that removed so basically I've taken this all apart, I've pre-assembled it, that way I didn't uh, kind of kill your time and you know what, what to do. And you're also, they're also gonna attach, uh, there's one more bolt on there that's gonna attach the power steering uh, unit as well. So this is going to come out this way, disconnect these hoses. Also, remember, before you start on this job, you wanna make sure that you flush the radiator, or radi uh, the system completely. The way to do that is you reach down, usually on the, on the bottom right-hand corner, you're gonna see the drain cock, you're gonna unscrew that let the radiator fluid flow out and just let it all pour out. Uh, I left it sitting overnight to make sure that was all done and you wanna make sure that it's pretty much purged out of the system, okay? This is also a good time to do a radiator flush 
uh, flush out the fluids, get everything out of the way, check your hoses. Uh, it's a good time to do that. Also, um, I may show another video on how to do a throttle body bypass. That's also something you want to do. So you want to take full advantages. When you have work to do on the radiator and you have to flush the system, might as well do everything that you, that's related to that. You know, replace the hoses if you can, uh, look at some of the connectors, sensors, etc. Those things that are, are sensitive to the actual fluids running through it. So I'm going to go ahead and remove this housing lid here. Okay. And you see the radiator fan here. I'm going to pull this out of the way. Okay. Another thing I want to mention is always remember, whenever you're doing work on the car, make sure you disconnect the battery. Okay. You want to make sure you disconnect the negative battery terminal prior to any of that. Now, you're gonna also going to have a two two hoses running from the radiator. One is on the top, that's running straight into the engine block, the other one's a return, and and that's gonna be down here on the bottom right-hand corner, okay, the passenger side. You wanna make sure that those two are out. Again, check the hoses in there as well. You're gonna probably have to get under the car to get the bottom one out, okay? Top one's real easy, just pull that one out, and that's up there on the top left-hand corner. So once you do that, we're gonna go ahead and pull this ratchety old thing out of here. Okay, say goodbye to the wretched radiator. Look at there's even leaves falling out here. Not surprised there's things breeding in here. And you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and sort of clean up. As I mentioned, I don't have a condenser in here, I took that out. But you wanna go ahead and, and clean this area up, do a couple of things before we put the new radiator in. So let me go ahead and clean this up and get back to you right now. All right, so if you notice what I did was I basically just dropped the new radiator in here. And the reason is I'm just doing this for some fitment. I'm making sure that the hose is attached and that everything's working out fine. Now, since we are going from a one row to a two row, there's a couple of small differences that you're gonna encounter, okay? First of all, on the bottom, there's a rubber mount, sort of like a um, this rubber mount that goes on both sides. It holds both the radiator and the condenser. One of the things I want you to notice about that is that it does raise it a little bit. That's one. Two is you're probably gonna have to do some modifications here. Now, it seems that the previous owner of this car already had this modified because I do see some cutouts here in the housing, but we're gonna have to go ahead and do some extra modifications because now I'm putting the cap on for sizing, okay? And I'm realizing that it's not gonna have enough clearance here to give me the ability to turn the radiator cap on and off, right? So to pop it out, that's one. Second of all is I wanna make sure that everything else here is lining up flush and I've got enough space. So I've got enough space here, but I am gonna to have to do some modifications here. So I'm gonna pull this hood back out. I'm gonna get my grinder, cut out a little bit more of this piece here, and that should give me enough clearance. Now I can't go any further up because the housing itself and these brackets are bumping up and I really don't wanna get into cutting those because that's just gonna compromise this entire uh, hood piece. So let's go ahead and do that, and when we come back, we're gonna finish up putting these pieces together. Cut. All right, so we see we've kind of cleaned up a little bit here the area. Uh, another thing you're gonna notice is uh, there's some new hoses here that I've also taken the time to replace. So now we're gonna go ahead and sit the new radiator in. Okay. Again, much, much of an improvement over the stock. If you notice, this thing pretty much drops right in. Now granted, it, it does help that I've got the condenser out, but this is made specifically for this Corvette model. Now we're gonna go ahead and start reattaching all the hoses, make sure the drain cock is secured. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, put the hood back on this now. Now the reason is, again, because the hood, this uh, radiator hood basically supports or frames this in. So you wanna make sure that this is nice and snug as well. I'm gonna go ahead and start uh, reattaching everything. Put the hood back on, just like we took it off. Okay, I'm gonna get these, uh, basically these condenser hoses out of the way for myself so I can actually work on it. 
and these lines again are much better improvement if you want you can email me and I'll let you know uh, the specifics of these hoses but it really is a godsend because these new transmission line hoses these oil oil line hoses are flexible and it just made my life so much easier especially considering everything else I've got going on here so let's go ahead and start putting this back together and we should be done in just about a second all right so here we are made the final cut and now this thing is looking fantastic I mean beautiful all aluminum looks much better here and I know it's going to work a lot better too in cooling the uh, the engine so I've got the clearance on here on the on the cap now so I've got that resolved remember I had to cut out that piece here now we can actually uh, you know unscrew and take this off easily now I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, screw the bolts back in reconnect all these hoses okay transmission line hoses etc gonna go ahead and connect all that stuff back in and then refill it back with its fluids and and get this thing running again all right guys please don't forget to subscribe and let me know if you have any questions